Hello and welcome to the second read watch review. I had a think there. Hello you from, named it. Hello from Britpool as well. Yes. So this is uh, the review for watches. Now da, 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 da. I'm sure that wasn't as tatty as that when I lent you. Uh, hang on a minute. What? You kept the sleeve on the shelf while I took the book. Ah, whatever. So it was you. So watches was a book written in the eighties, probably early eighties, by Dean R. Coontes, who's later on in life dropped the R from the Coontes, mm -hmm. and then adapted into I think five movies. But we're just going to do the one with Corey Haim. Now the book came out, and it was basically when I was a fan of I don't know if you know the story, but when I was a big fan of the Corys when I was younger, watches was just hard to get a hold of, even though everywhere I look right now, watches is available. Um, it wasn't until I moved to New Zealand when I was a kid and I was walking around this video shop and there it was and I was like oh my god and I saved up my pocket money and I bought it came home had it for years never seen it on VHS when I went back in 2010 it was still there and then I got home and realized my mom had chucked it out and I was just like the fucking curse of watches now this is the VHS really bad cover over here gives oh away the uh, the beast on the front cover Watches Corey here, Michael I inside. Now the original artwork is that. I think it's an amazing DVD box. Oh, yeah. Even though the creature's like waving at you. Hi, I'm watching. Hi, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Corey Hames' face was always heavily marketed on there. So yeah, it's a movie by John Hass, based on the best sounds novel. Now that one's released by Universal actually, and that one is Studio Canal. Studio Canal still going strong, and this is my favourite version of it is my German import one. The artwork on that is something of godly. It's one of the nice... Something nights. of godly. Look at the dog. It looks evil. Oh my god. Could you come back? It's a German import. So sketchy and retro, but that's the one I absolutely love. I like the pink. Yeah, the pink's retro. The, pink. the, the credits at the start when it comes up and it's just like, shh, watches. <laughs> I've just tried to put the best over as I can right now in funky ass colours and like, I like the score. Yeah, I think I commented on that, didn't I? Yeah, it's yeah. got a nice like. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's got some good music cues. I think it's actually done by a goldsmith. A e. goldsmith. Well, it's not Jerry Goldsmith, but I'm sure it's a goldsmith. Music by Joel Goldsmith, so it might be related to Jerry, who's obviously famous for stuff like First Blood and Gremlins. Gotta be. So. What did you think of the book to the film? Because you read the book first, years later I got the book and I've read the book and I really fucking enjoy the book. I love the book so much. I got a little bit obsessed, didn't I? I was like, I'm so obsessed with this book. Um, I loved it. There's massive differences though, isn't there? Oh yeah, because when I read the book and I was like, oh yeah, we're going to watch a movie and I was expecting um, Travis to be a lot older. I was not expecting them to the be movie. Out. I think this was made when Corey here moved back to Canada. This mm -hmm. is after uh, the initial first run with Corey Feldman, where he was he literally went back to Canada to recoup himself and take him away from the scene of Hollywood mm. and stuff like that, and took this job because um, it's all set in the Canadian up there in Canada. One thing I loved about the book was Nora, and Nora was like totally non-existent. Nora's are a, where Nora's his mom. Well, she's his mom, but in the film, in the book. The her and Travis meet accidentally in a park when the dog gets the yeah, attacker Einstein. away from her. Um, he's just called Furface. He's not called Einstein. But in the book, he's called Einstein. But then in the movie, it was always Furface, and I was like, "Come on, give the bloody guy in him, Jesus." I know. Like the the creature as well. I mean, the the, the timber. There's a lot of difference. I mean, first off, the creature in the book. The first off, Einstein is ridiculously funny and obsessed with Mickey Mouse. Like literally, he's got loads of jokes. He communicates well. The film, the book is also set over about a year. Oh yeah. This mm -hmm. all happens in a weekend. In a week. <laughs> yeah. Now, a week where everyone just seems to go around in a fucking circle. Because even though mm -hmm. Travis and his mom Nora, who's his mom in this, seem to like go on a run, they're like all of a sudden they meet back up like with a hotel room. When they like, they find her, then they go back to show her, and it's yeah. just like. There's two characters I was gutted about. So there was Nora, because Nora, at the beginning of the book, Nora was so quiet, contained, um, had never been outside, pretty much. Had never been anywhere. She's never socialised. She's doing well lover, isn't she? Our auntie. But our auntie always said people outside of the house are bad people. Um, and then she grew throughout the book, and her and Travis got married, whatnot. Um, I was gutted. I was gutted that she wasn't that character in the movie. And then the vet... 
the vet in the book was lovely. He was such a hero. Um, and he was so wonderful. And the then vet. he ended up grassing on them the in vet the movie. Is the gunman in cuffs? You're a natural son. Never shot a gun like that before, man. That's always a link. Always a link. Yeah. Um, but he was. Then he just grassed them up in the movie, and I was like, oh, I wanted him to be wonderful too. But then there's the copper. Well, the thing is, there's one of the characters missing because Michael Ironside's character is completely reinvented, unlike a crap movie twist. There's a third subject. The hitman. Hitman's completely Mark. missing. Vince, he's called Vince. Vince is missing. He turns up in uh, Edge of Honor, remember him? Running around with the glasses on and stuff, like random hitman. <laughs> that movie, man. That movie. But yeah, no, I did love the book. I did. I the did enjoy the movie. I did, and it's not just because Corey Hames in it. I've done the podcast um, for it. If you want to actually, I'm going to not spoil this, but Watchers 2 borrows a lot more from the book. Watchers 2 is almost like a remake of the first movie. Travis, like, he's not called Travis, but the character is older because one thing because Corey Haim is a teenager in it mm -hmm. Travis in the book is suicidal he's been he's been in the army yeah. he's basically he's in the woods to kill himself at the start and that's how he finds Einstein but what was interesting in the movie though remember is where Corey Haim's sitting there and he says oh yeah my dad was in da -da -da -da. Yeah. and I was like ah oh, Travis was there's your link yeah they, they do use link. that but in the second movie it starts off and I mean the, I've done the podcast for the movie I lent it off Casper um, there is more in, in the second film, the guy basically escapes the army. He meets the dog. Um, the dog needs to get back to the woman who made it. There's a guy who plays more of the Frankenstein character. Mm -hmm. Again, the creature. And it, it's, a re it's almost like a remake straight away. And obviously the creature comes after it. There's a few more deaths. It does borrow a little bit more. It's a bit more truer to the book. Yeah. But obviously they've already used the initial character. Corey Him obviously didn't return. But the film is stupid. There's like there's a whole... But it's like there's a... Watchers vision but again the whole world of watches it's like watches what, what what's watching it because in the book he's called the abomination yeah and oxcom is it uh, xcom it's called oxcom did, seven did what did the ones refer to him as the outsider in the, the outsider movie? yeah because that that's what they refer to him in the book i couldn't remember it did annoy me that the dog didn't get a name though just because i'm a massive dog lover but i love the fact he was called einstein because he was so smart and he didn't get a name mm. But also, you feel sorry for the outsider in the book. He knows, but he's oh, driven God. to kill. Because the 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 outsider hates itself. The outsider thinks it's like the most hideous thing in the world, and so ugly. But you got none of that. You got Michael Ironside going. I am. He's going fucking full air. Uh, that him off ER. Well, it's him off Total Recall in, ER. in Highlander Two. This guy's full. He's a great actor, but just like ER. just turns up the fucking massive stereo. Goes fucking. I am the fool. <laughs> Jump cut, got the light out, got the camera right. Didn't check the memory card of the camera. <laughs> Good old VHS cameras never let you down. No, I enjoyed it. I love the book more, but I did enjoy the movie. There's just them two characters that I was a little bit gutted about. There's like um, five watches though. There's like they were still making them in the early nineties. I mean, the, like the only one that's ever been released over here is Watch the first one. But it's again, why is it called Watches? It's it's quite weird. It's like no one's like no one's. I mean, yes, it's watching you, mm. especially when it's creeping around. But the dog as well. I think one of the things they lost. The dog is absolutely hilarious in the book. Mm -hmm. The dog is amazing. He's funny. He has some real funny key moments. Yeah. But they just don't have that. I mean, he does have the whole movies. I think we only watch this one because Corey Hames in it, and we're doing a Corey quest. So. Well, it's a bit, well again. It's the book. I mean, Jurassic Park's probably going to be the next review rant random. But again, you would have to watch all three. Unless we all read Review ran random, excuse me. Read, watch, review. Um, oh, would, the Goonies? You've... We've got the Goonies now. I found the book, finally. Novelised Asian. Uh, Novelised no Asian? <laughs> That's a novelised Novelized Asian. Oh, I can't even say that word. What is wrong with me? Novelisation. Novelisation of the Goonies. Yeah. But yeah. Unknown actors in the second one again. Check out the channel. There is podcasts for both movies where it's just me sitting there, and I reflect a little bit more on this. You know, rant a bit more, show the comparisons. But yeah, the only thing I need from the collection is a big box VHS. Uh, hint, of hint. What? Watches? Don't have one. Hint, hint. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to bribe them at the minute. So it's just got a shit cover. Like literally, I, I've got a real disappointment about the VHS. The, the, the like, my VHS from um, New Zealand had the DVD cover on it. it was fucking awesome. Right, we'll see in the outtakes.
What do you mean you're not allowed to say that? Don't put that in. Jump cut, another jump cut, I'm not allowed to say something apparently. I don't know if he is or not. I'm just being careful. Yeah, yeah. You and your novelised eight Asians. <laughs> and I can't say where you work. <laughs> so yeah. That's it. These are, these will not be like there'll not be a new episode next week because Muggins here likes reading the like sloppy and weep stuff. You could have done uh, me before you. You've read the book. Aye. Aye. I could do. I've already done the review for that. And I'm book. not reading anything sloppy at the minute either, by the way. I'm actually reading like a thriller. Aye. Uh, it's just a thriller. But yeah, Jurassic Park will probably be the next one. wonder if they do a, a book novelisation. Novelisation for Moonwalker. That'd be interesting. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what does have a book series and it's meant to be amazing is um, the Bourne movies or Jason Bourne. Ugh. God, I'm going now. This video is over. <laughs>